Well, hello, this is Pastor Tim. I am so grateful to see you this afternoon, uh, Thursday, Ascension Thursday, uh, 2022. Uh, before I begin, I do want to address the, uh, the tragedy um, in Robb Elementary in Texas. And I want you to know that the news of this is absolutely heartbreaking absolutely tears at the very core of who I am, and I pray that it also tears at the core of who you are. That this sense that we as human beings um, ravage each other and hurt each other, and I pray that it will stop. That is my prayers, that is my hopes that the, the leaders of our nation can find it within them, uh, to address this in whatever way they think they can to uh, protect us, to heal us, to allow us as a community, as humanity, to be safe, to be safe in our community places, to be safe at church, to be safe in the public square, to be safe in our public schools. I pray for that strength and that courage from those whose power it is to do that. Make that happen. Which leads me to Ascension Sunday. The Ascension is the final piece, if you will, in the component to what begins in Lent on Ash Wednesday. When we see ourselves for our great humanity and we lead ourselves along the ark, or are led really, along the ark by Christ through his final days of life, through his passion, through Good Friday, through the crucifixion and the resurrection. I find that it is not ironic. Instead, it is a challenge to each and every one of us today that Jesus was a danger. He was a danger to the powers to be. Yeah, that Jesus the Christ, who believed in peace and in justice and in comfort and in care and who re released the oppressed, was met with anger, was met with al malice, was met with a sense that he needed to be destroyed. I think that that causes us to look at ourselves and ask, is this the truth today? Do we see that when somebody wants to bring peace and harmony, when someone says that we do not have to ravage and hurt each other anymore, how are they met? Are they met with anger? Are they met with being despised? Do groups get together, institutions, organizations, agencies to do away with that kind of quote-unquote troublemaker? As Christians, we are, are called to follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. To not just remember, but to re-participate in the very life that Christ has laid out for us to be his followers. Without question, we are called to stand up for justice. We are called to stand up for the oppressed, the harmed children in this instance, who have been wounded and killed, their families broken apart. When a family loses a child, it is terrible. And there are times when there are accidents, when there are illness, there are events that are tragic, that seem beyond our control. And yet, I don't think this one is. I believe we have to look inside and see if the violence that has occurred in this public school and others in the past is beyond our control. We need to be aware of it, to find ways by which we can address it through our Christian faith. 
Ascension Sunday, or Ascension Thursday rather, seems to be something that we're not clear why. Why is it so important in our religious calendar to have or to recognize the Ascension moment? I mean, we have the crucifixion. We understand that. We see that. And three days later, we recognize that against the odds, against the fact that how the world sees peace in God and justice is to destroy it, to mitigate it, to make sure it does not rear its head of hope and love, consciously aware that our human condition is valuable. Jesus does not take on the skin and flesh and bone of humanity to say that it is not good. Instead, God takes on our human condition to remind us of our power and our strength for goodness, for wholeness, for holiness, to be a part of the transformative power that is grace mercy, forgiveness, and restoration. And that, that we know when it comes to institutions, agencies, organizations who only exist to keep themselves in power and authority go out of their way to destroy anything that cuts in on their stuff. The resurrection is God's answer to that. The importance of that is that when Jesus is resurrected, he does not hunt down the Romans and demand justice and violence. Jesus does not hunt down the institutional religious leaders and demand that they acquiesce and worship. Instead, he searches out, he sought his followers. He saw those who had even turned their backs on him. And we would expect a confrontation of threats and anger, maybe. Because this is what we sometimes see God is. Instead, Jesus makes them breakfast. He feeds them. He sees their fear. He sees their humanity. And he's merciful and loving. And he calls them, especially in the story with Peter when they're fishing, to repentance. He says, turn to me and follow my ways. And we would think that that would be enough. I mean, is that not what this history and and all that we have come to, to hope for all that we believe culturally as Christians, religiously as Christians, historically as Christians, that the highlight moment is the resurrection. The God, the, 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 the God in human form, Jesus the Christ, says, repent and follow me. So what means the ascension? We hear the story in the book of Acts. It's in the very first chapter. In the very first verse about how Jesus taught until the day he was taken up after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them for many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. I'll stop there. In other words, the resurrection, if we believe this, if we can absolutely um, hold on to it, is a reminder again and again of God's unending love for us. To hear the message over and over again of not consternation, of not punishment, of not consequences that are negative. But again, the sense that the peace of Christ, the love of Christ, 
the hope of Christ, the mercy of Christ, cannot be destroyed, but lives on. Lives on in our lives, in our hearts. It calls us to challenge anything and anyone who says that peace is not the answer, that love is not the answer, that reconciliation is not the answer. The restorative power of humanity toward one another will always be the answer. That, that's the resurrection. Which leads us to the ascension. We know both from Scripture as well as in our orthodoxy that Christ rose and sits upon the, the, the right hand of the Father. Now, that might sound like old-fashioned language, but maybe that's exactly what we need. Good, old-fashioned, honest-to-goodness language. This is that Jesus Christ sits beside the Father, pointing out that humanity's difficulties, how they treat each other with brokenness and harm, malice and shame and judgment, it's that this, these people, are worthy of love and have it in them because he sends out those apostles and knows them that they have it in them for good. Ascension is the guarantee that God believes that we have it in ourselves to do good, to do better, to do love, to do honesty, to do respect, to do courage. The ascension says, in essence, that whoever chooses to think that they are in power, and they are in authority, and they are sovereign over other human beings, that if they do not see them for the real sovereign, before Christ, then, and only then, does it become abundantly clear that their leadership is unhealthy. That they cannot be trusted. If they are not answering to the great sovereign, if they cannot stand before God and say, this is a just act, well, then they think they are superheroes and I say that they are madmen. Man, that's our challenge. That's what the ascension gives to us. A guarantee that there is a sovereign who has demonstrated the behaviors, the actions by which we are called to, to lead and to love, to care, and to have concern. And so... Acts ends this way. It says um, that when he said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up. This is Jesus lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. And while they were looking intently at the sky, as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. In other words, they are called to understand deeply that the Spirit is coming. And the Spirit will fill them so that they will live amongst each other. That they will see Jesus in each other and that. That is the reminder over and over and over again that this ascension puts it upon us to do the hard work. Ascension Thursday puts it upon us to live as Christ-like as we can in our imperfections and in our sinfulness and in our all that human junk we are sometimes. We are challenged to live a life follows Christ. And that Jesus can't do it for us. That we have been given the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, to do it for Him. To live under the sovereign power 
of our Lord and Savior. And so this day, I ask you to really, really embrace this ascension, to embrace all that it means, to put aside our petty gods, all these tiny things that we think are also valuable and important, this group and that group and this belief and that belief. I'm going to one belief. I'm going to send you the God who has given us direction, who sits beside the Father, who try and love, says to us to go forth into the world and live as if you're following me. That, that is why the ascension is so very important. I pray that that ascension this day can in some way transform who we are and what we're about. And I want you to remember through our ups and downs, our successes and failures, our hard works and days we just don't have it, that God loves you and so do I. I mean that the deepest in me. I ask you this day to go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.